So theoretical probability is the probability of an event that can be measured exactly without doing any experiments, right? But empirical probability is the probability of an event based on data collected in real life experiments, okay? So really quickly, we're just going to show you the difference between these two things. So there's two ways of getting probability. We kind of know it, first of all. Theoretical probability is kind of probability you already know. Toss a coin. What's the probability of that landing on a head? You know, what is it? Well, it has to be theoretical probability. Find the probability of getting heads has to be one half. I mean, we know that, right? Um, we don't need to. We don't need. To, it's just. It's. It's. There's two possible outcomes. So it's number of possible outcomes, number of favorable outcomes over number of possible. There's two possible, and there's one we want: heads, and there's two possible tail or heads or tails, right? Example two: roll a dice. Find the probability of getting a six. A six. What is the theoretical probability of this? Okay, roll a dice. What's the theoretical probability of getting a six? Right. Well, there's six possible outcomes, right? And there's only one favorable, six. So the probability is one favorable outcome out of six uh, possible, right? But if you take a basketball player has scored 134 out of 216 free throws this season, you know, what's the theoretical probability a basketball player is going to score a shot? I mean, we, that's that's a completely, you can't control that. You can't tell if somebody, what what their, um, what, what the theoretical, the exact probability of somebody scoring a shot is. I mean, you would think it was 50-50, or they miss or they score, right? But hey, some players are better than others. Some, some miss most of the time, some score most of the time. So in a case like this, you're forced to, to just go with empirical probabilities. That means calculating uh, the probability from real life data. Okay, so um, so I guess we'll we'll go ahead and start with this one. If a basketball player has scored 134 shots out of 216 free throws, what's the empirical probability he will score his next free throw shot? So the probability that he'll score is equal to, and what we do, or we don't really know, but we kind of we we we. Uh, Calculate it. We 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 um, estimate it when we just take the um, obviously the number of uh, shots scored. He has already scored out of the total shots, right? In other words, the number of favorable outcomes that have happened over the total um, outcomes. So you could you could say number of favorable. Outcomes over the no, uh, over the um, total number of outcomes or events. So he scored 134. He's missed the rest, but uh, the probability that he'll score is 134, right, out of 216. Plug that in the calculator and give your answer as a percentage to uh, to one decimal place or something, right? Let's see. So 134 out of 216 is 0 0.62 0 0.37 etc. We'll just round that to uh, a percentage to the nearest whole number. Okay, Percentage to the nearest whole number. So that is 62%. So he has scored 62% of his free throws so far this season. So you would say that the probability that he will score his next free throw shot is going to be 62 percent, right? So, um, in other words, if you're betting and you bet your friend a hundred dollars that he's going to score the next shot, is that a good idea? Well, yeah, because he'll probably will score. I mean, he's more chance of scoring than not scoring. 62 percent chance of scoring, right? So if, if you're going to bet with a friend on $100 whether he'll score the next shot, that's a good deal. Especially if you can get a whole bunch of people to bet with you, you'll probably end up winning money. Probably not with just one friend. You want to get about get about 100 friends and bet with them all and you probably win some money. Anyway, but 
good luck. They probably know the players uh, okay at basketball, so they wouldn't do that. Anyway, what is the empirical probability he will not score his next free throw shot? Press pause and do that one if you need time. There's a few ways of doing it. Well, there's two I can think of anyway. Any idea? Well, the probability that he will score is 62% probability that he will not score his next shot surely that's just equal to well let's take a hundred percent and subtract sixty two percent what does that give us well it's thirty eight percent right well if his chance of scoring is sixty two percent surely is the chance of not scoring is thirty eight percent right does that make sense if you want to, you can go 216 minus 134 gives what? 82. So that means he's missed 82 so far this season. 82 shots missed. And if you take 82 and divide that by the total 216, what do you get? You get 0 0.379, etc., or approximately 38%. Okay, does that make sense? So anyway, um, now some crazy mathematicians don't didn't fully believe that the probability of getting ahead is a half, and so what they did is they said, okay, we're going to completely prove this by actually flipping a coin over and over and over again. I think uh, there was a guy that did it in prison one time and he ma made thousands and thousands of, of, of flips and calculated them all. So if we keep tossing a coin, okay, there's one toss and um, no head so far. So there's another toss, that's two tosses and we get one head so far and so we've had two tosses, one head, here's another toss and that's not a head yet and here's another toss and that's not a head yet here's another toss that's still not a head I'll flip this properly, here's another toss that's a head right? see I'm not doing too well am I? do another toss that's not a head do another toss that is a head so oh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight I'll do a couple more nine and ten. Ten tosses and I've only got three heads. So based on that really quick experiment, my empirical probability of getting a head is in fact three number of favorable outcomes recorded over the total number of outcomes. Three out of ten. Which of course is, you know, now one half as we know is fifty percent, right? Zero point five or fifty percent, right? and 3 out of 10 is 30 percent. So from this little experiment I have calculated that my chances of getting ahead is 30 percent. What's the problem? Well first of all we know it's 50 percent and second of all um, and something that you need to see is if you keep tossing that coin and go all the way to say a hundred tosses you'll come up a lot closer to 50%. And this is called the law of large numbers. If you make lots of tosses, it, the result will eventually get closer to 50%. Right? So if we keep tossing that coin, and you might indeed get something like 56 um, tosses. Right? And then you can say, okay, now my, pro my uh, empirical probability of getting ahead is 56 out of 100 which is 56 percent and now that's closer to what it really is which is 50 percent right then if you ended up making a lot like 10,000 tosses 10,000 tosses you would find that you would get even closer to 50 percent you might in fact get something like 5,038 heads and so you could say your probability of getting a head is 5,038 out of 10,000 which is um, it's 0 0.5038 or 50.38 percent and so there's a thing called the law of large numbers where 
uh, the the bigger your sample, the closer you are to the truth. Now the truth is 50%, and they say that if you made infinite tosses, that eventually your empirical probability would show 50%, right? So we never really know the truth with real life data, but if we get a big sample we get close to the truth so you believe anyway that uh, even w without knowing that it was 50 percent just doing the 10,000 tosses you would say okay it's about 50.38 or it's around 50 right so same at rolling dice same with rolling dice if I only make um, 10 rolls okay so one there's a roll two there's another one there's another one there's another one there's another one. Oh, we got a six. There's another one. There, oh, there's a six, right? One, two, three. I haven't made ten yet. Here's another roll. Oh, here's another six, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, of nine, don't they? Sorry, right, one more. And it's a four. So I took ten rolls and I got three sixes. So that shows my empirical probability of getting a six is 3 out of 10 which is 30 percent right but 0.3 30 percent but 1 out over 6 of course is not 30 percent for goodness sakes 1 out of 6 is 0 0.16666 etc so it's um, approximately 16.7 percent let's say right so I did a lot better in that little experiment than I should have. I should only be getting 16.7 percent. But if you, once again, if you roll that dice many, many times, many, many times, if you made a thousand rolls, you would get close to your probability of getting. I mean, you would be talking, let's say, da 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 da, uh, point uh, one six uh, nine, let's say, times uh, one thousand. Sorry, duh. So let's say you get about 169 sixes. So your probability of getting a six after many throws would be, um, let's say, 169 out of a thousand. So approximately 16.9 percent. So that's just something to be wary of. If you take a small sample or do a small experiment with a small number, then you're going to be off by the truth. You 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 won't you won't be getting the truth with that. You got to you got it a lot. Big numbers. Anyway. So so here we go. The the point of this exp uh, this lesson is that theoretical probability doesn't require any experimentation. We can figure it out right away. Exactly. Okay? But empirical probability is calculated from data. Now you can do empirical probability from things like uh, uh, rolling a dice or tossing a coin that are obvious anyway, but um, w which is kind of silly. But uh, but you, it can be done, you know. And empirical probability has to be done for something like a basketball player. What's the chance of him getting a getting a, a throw? Or empirical probability has to be done for something like this. If you want to figure out what is the chance of a particular car running a red light at a particular intersection in a city you have to c count some data. You just, just count how many cars did do that and then you'll know the probability of a, any particular car running a red light. So a city counted 546 cars running a red light out of 13,451 in one week at a particular intersection. What is the empirical probability that the next car at that intersection will run a red light? Press pause and do that one if you need time. So I'll do it now. So probability that'll that'll run the um, red light equals um, or if it's close to the number of uh, cal calculated outcomes, 546 out of the number the total number of um, of outcomes, right? So if we plug that in the calculator, we'll give that as a decimal and a percent. So 0 0.0403, etc. So it's approximately, the probability is approximately 0 0.0 to, to two decimal places. To two decimal places, 0 0.04, and as a percentage, write that as a percentage 
4%. Okay? So the probability that a car will run a red light based on data that we've collected, and we certainly have collected a lot, so you would say this is a good and accurate probability here. A lot of 13,000 cars, this is a good, I mean, that's like, once again, that's like 10,000 throws of a coin. If you, if you toss the coin 10,000 times, you would expect the probability of getting ahead to be very close to 50%, right? So you would say this is a good a good result, and, and, and really the probability of a car really running a red light here is actually 4%. So, calculate um, what is the empirical probability that the next car at that intersection will not run a red light. So the probability that they will run a red light is 4%. What's the probability they will not? Probability they will not run a red light would be, and you can just go 100 percent subtract four percent gives ninety six percent right that's one way to do it does that make sense is four percent run it then you would say that ninety six percent do not right 